Um, yeah, uh, morning everyone. Um, feeling a little bit better than uh, I had been recently. <clears throat> so I've still got a bit of a bad cough. So um, sorry about that. It's a bit irritating with the coughing noises. Um, this morning, uh, I'm just going to do a uh, quick as you can uh, little one because um, uh, when I've been uploading um, my videos, it's just so slow. Sometimes if I do a video and it's like 15, 20 minutes, it could take two days to upload. So um, yeah, hopefully things will be better next time because I'll have uh, a better connection then. Uh, so yeah, um, what I wanted to talk about was um, uh, my time in uh, High Point, which High Point Prison in um, Suffolk. And uh, I was there from 1993 for two years till um, 1995. Uh, so yeah, what it was, I was in Downview in 93. And uh, which is, this is another story and I'll do it another time. But uh, yeah, I was in Downview in 93 and you know, on this day, uh, one of the screws come up to me and say, says, you know, you're being transferred back to kit. No, you know, no warning, nothing. So basically, you know, it was straight up to the uh, gate, taxi, two screws in the taxi, which was better than a sweat box, obviously, um, up to high point. So, um, and you know, everyone's heard about high point i mean back then they was calling it knife point and i mean even driving up there the sign when you're coming into sort of like the prison compound it had graffiti on it and they'd crossed out the h where it said knife point uh high point sorry and put a, a k and an n there to make it like knife point uh and it had been left like that for ages you know so obviously the screws you know they they used to do that you know, to make people fearful of it, you know, because it had a pretty bad reputation back then as like a sea cat dumping ground, like you had uh, High Point and Camp Hill. So all the people, you know, that were thrown out of High Point, sometimes if they weren't going back to a B cat, uh, if they were being sent back to a sea cat, another sea cat, they go back to, uh, go to, sorry, they go to Camp Hill on the Isle of Wight and people at Camp Hill would be sent to High Point, you know, and vice versa. So it had that sort of reputation as, uh, you know, as one of them nicks where there's loads and loads of trouble. I mean, I didn't mind it. So, yeah, but um, I couldn't do all of my stories from that jowl this morning because, um, you know, it's had too long. Um, but funny enough, I was just thinking about a little story and now, because my brain is so frazzled, you know, because of what I've done in my past, I can't remember which one I was going to do. Uh, so basically, I, I'll tell you a little bit about it. You know, I had a few, I had a couple of fights there, in high point, cell fights, stuff like that. Uh, I had some good friends and that. So I can't go into it all, the stories there. So basically, the story I want to do is about uh, this time um, when uh, a rapist got done. <clears throat> so basically, yeah, um, when I um, was in High Point, uh, when this happened, you know, when I first went there, you know, you, you go to induction and uh, when you get there, they give you like a phone card. They used to give you a phone card and a half ounce of tobacco. But I mean, there was so much gear there. I remember getting that, you know, because you're in the induction wing for the first week or two at High Point. Uh, and it's all single cells there over on the main. And um, you've got the south, which is on the same side. Yeah, and then on the, over the road there, you got the north, which was, and you got over there, on um, work location and that, you know, depending on what work you was doing and what course. And generally it was a little bit better. 
over at the north. And um, there used to be years ago a decat. I don't know if that's still there, but um, I never had a decat ever. So I, I, I never went there. Um, and I think the north turned into women's prison. But uh, back then, there was on the north, there was um, there was uh, north one, two, and three. And it's like when you first go there, you go to one, and then once you get to a stage where you're getting home leaves and stuff like that, you you progress to other uh, three. I think that's how it was then. So I think when this happened. I had been there for ages, like when, when this thing with this rapist happened, I had been there like um, oh, a couple of years nearly or something, or, or about two years or something. So yeah, that one of these stories I want to tell you about. So when I first went there, I was on, uh, I think I was on one, uh, but I, I was getting a home leave. My first home leave was coming up. So um, I uh, would have been on three. So, um, yeah, this time, and over in North, you had double cells and you had your own key to your cells. And like the end of the, the little, where the cells were, you had um, like gated bars and that. And you could walk around the wing. And then after a certain time at night, these, um, these bars would be locked and that, and there'd be a, a screw downstairs and that. So um, the story, yeah, what it was, um, there's a on on the uh, wing I was on. There's a lot of serious people there, you know, some real gangsters. You know, they they might have started their sentences in A cats or B cats, you know, keeping their head down and uh, progress to a C cat, hoping to get home leaves, and then you know, when they're getting near the end of their sentence. So this time, yeah, there's some a couple of guys had come to the prison, two co-defendants. No, sorry, they weren't co-defendants. They was from, the, as far as I know, they was from um, Telford in the north of England and uh, they were friends. But uh, what I want to get straight is it was only one of them that got done. See, the one that got done was in there for a uh, uh, hairy ape and skullduggery, which is slang for um, rape and buggery. And that was on a 13-year-old girl. So, you know, everyone's pretty angry. And you might be thinking, well, how did we know this and why are they there? Well, first of all, the guy that I'm talking about had come from Featherstone, which was another sea cat, but it did have a reputation of having a lot of uh, sex cases there, like a lot of sea cats do. But some of them, it's more than others. And... Um, Featherstone uh, was at that time one of them. So, and we knew of his offence because uh, we'd been tipped off by a uh, screw. And so he was saying, look, you can't do this guy <coughs> as soon as he comes onto the wing and all that. You know, you've got to wait till tomorrow because otherwise I'm risk he was saying he was risking losing his job, the screw, you know, by... Um, giving information and all that. It's the only way anyone could have known so quickly. So basically, he's come over to Sea Wing. Yeah, and I'm over there. I'm in a double, but uh, I, I hadn't been there long and I didn't have a cellmate because there wasn't anyone there to go with me, uh, in there with me at that time, you know. Um, but I had a lot of friends there. You know, I was mixing with people in the cell opposite every day, playing Kaluki, stuff like that. You know, for me, it was one of the best jails I'd ever been to. So yeah, I loved it there. And, uh, you know, basically I did have a, a pretty bad little heroin habit in there, you know, uh, which was what I was chasing. I was smoking it, you know, booting it. Uh, obviously a boot is a sort of rhyming slang, you know, boot, a boot lace which is slang for chase. Yeah, and when I say chase, as in chasing the dragon, you know, and then it, it goes in further, you know, you've got like Daisy Root for a boot. So you have all this slang, you know, Jimmy Boyle for the tin foil. Sorry, Jimmy Boyle for the tin foil <coughs> and all this stuff. Uh, have you got a Roger? 
you know, Roger Rabbit for a habit. It's all like sort of uh, London rhyming slang and stuff, Cockney rhyming slang that people used to talk in there. And then you got uh, all the all Jamaicans and they speak in, you know, you, you know how it is. Or people used to use back slang and all this stuff, but yeah. So, um, yeah, so we're there and uh, one of my friends from um, uh, East London, uh, Barking, Canning Town that way, he said to me, look, I've been to, the screws told me, we're not doing him today, we're doing it tomorrow. Uh, we don't want anybody thinking that um, letting this guy, you know, freaking him out, letting him know, you know, because he could just disappear and go on the numbers, you know what I mean? So, you know, if he thought something was dodgy, so no one was to say anything, and not even everyone was told, do you know what I mean? It was only a few people. So basically what happened was, because he, he's come on the wing, and he, the, hot, the beating was not scheduled to the next day, it was going to be in the TV room, yeah, but... You know, he's just fresh onto the wing. So basically, he's got to go in with someone. Yeah, and I've got a spare. Because that his friend, yeah, he was on, uh, I think he was on one of the other um, blocks. But apparently, I, I was being told that his friend didn't even know, you know, he was just some other geezer from up north that had met him in uh, Featherstone, so he didn't get it, but he did disappear still the next day after um, after he got it, because he, he probably thought, ah, oh, guilty by association and all that, but um, yeah, so what happened was, the screws turned up and gone, look, you got a new cellmate, and obviously I'm thinking, God, I know what this geezer's done, mate, and I'm looking at him and he's a bit... He's really young. I mean, at the time, I would have been 24, 23, 24. I think I might have been 24, because I was 23 when I went into High Point, and 25 when I come out. So, but he was younger than me. By looking at him, he looks about 22 or something, 21. I don't know. He couldn't have been younger than 21. But anyway, I know he was a really bad one, because uh, he was doing like a seven-year sentence. You know, and apparently just... Yeah, that's pretty bad, basically, you know, and a knife was involved and all that, you know, on this 13-year-old girl in Telford. So I don't know when the offence was committed up there and um, even what his name is, because I couldn't remember now, because it was so long ago, but yeah. So basically, during the day, he's come in and he's in my cell. So I've got to sit there with him. It's all right in the daytime, right up until bang up in the evening at 8 o'clock, and then basically, you know, during the day, I ain't seeing him. I'm doing whatever I'm doing, telly, you know, whatever. I'm at work because I was on the painting and decorating course. You know, but in the evening, you know, we got to be banged up. So that's all happened. And then, you know, my pals have said, you know, you've got to do this, that. Don't, you know, don't do nothing. Just keep him sweet until the morning. So I was like, yeah, 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 you know. But, um... So yeah, basically, um, he's coming my cell, and time we all banged up, it's probably about nine o'clock in the evening, and I'm thinking, do you know what? I ain't even talking to him. I'm just getting my head down, right, and uh, going to sleep. So when we're in there and that, he's sort of like um, trying to talk to me and that, yeah? But um, what, what you've got to remember is, there, you're locked off, like, in a corridor with the cells, and after sort of like nine o'clock in the evening and you can go into other people's cells and that. And I, I used to be in a cell opposite, you know, playing Kaluki with a couple of our pals. One was from uh, Islington, Danny, my mate Danny, little Danny, and another geezer, Justin, who was an Arsenal supporter, was from Old Kent Road. You know, uh, Danny used to be with me, but when Justin came, he went in with him I mean, I did have the ump about it a little because of what how it turned out with this geezer having to come in me, even though it was only for one night. I had the hump about it, but it was all right. It was because I was getting my home leave and going, and he still had a long time left. So, you know, they might as well have been in the same cell because I was going to be going eventually a lot, lot longer, um, a lot earlier than them. 
So basically, uh, about sort of, well, I think it was about 11 or 12, I had a look in my cell. And uh, he's there, like, under his blanket and all that, uh, with a book. You know, reading his book, lying in his bed. Reading his book, facing towards the wall. So I've seen him, gone back over there, said to Justin and Danny, you know, what was going on. And they was, you know, they're having a laugh about it and that. But at the end of the day, it's sort of like bedtime. So I've gone in there and I never said a word to him, basically. I just fucking got in a bed, yeah, and uh, went to sleep. I mean, I was chased, uh, smoking the brown, but I'd been doing that in the cell opposite because, uh, you know, obviously didn't trust this geezer one bit. So, um, yeah. So that would have helped me get me head down. So gone in there, uh, gone to sleep, and in the morning, it's another day, yeah, breakfast, whatever, yeah, going to work, yeah. So what's happening is uh, at lunchtime, you know, you've got that bit of time for your lunch, and people going to the TV room and stuff, yeah. So I knew it was going to go, but he's taken the bait, and as soon as we're allowed in the TV room, he's gone in there and plotted up on the chair. And there's a couple of other guys... He's from Nottingham, Trevor, yeah, um, he was there keeping an eye out, like on him, on him, you know, making it, just watching the telly. So basically they're sitting there, I think, you know, there's the rapist there and two or maybe three other guys all sitting there as if they're just watching the telly, yeah. I'm not in there, I'm in the corridor outside. But then all of a sudden, all the bodies that are going to do it have all come out, uh, of corridors, you know, other cells, whatever, into the TV room. And uh, I lost count. So basically what happened, <coughs> they've all steamed in there. And I'll see, it. he's got a good fucking kick in. But what I thought, you know, and I think he might have got plunged a few times, but he wasn't, you know, and he was cut in the face and that. But me personally, I thought he got off lightly. All right, he got slashed a bit and maybe a few little stabs, do you know what I mean? But he got away with his life. Yeah, I know he went to hospital and that, but it wasn't as bad as it seems. And the reason why it wasn't as bad is because so many people wanted to do him, you know, because everyone hates fucking sex offenders in there, you know what I mean? I mean, let's have it right, they should all be fucking hung. Sorry about my language, they should all be hung. So basically, yeah, when they've all gone in there and steamed into him and jumping on his head, Everyone wants to have a go. I couldn't get nowhere near it, near him, you know. But in the end, I think there was about 30 cons in there doing this one geezer. And basically, you couldn't get in there to do anything. There was too many people in there doing him, you know. For me, it would have been better if just one or two or three people had done it and done him properly, you know. So, yeah, basically what happened is he's got it. But it only lasted about a minute or two, you know, and then the screws came, you know, the one that gave the information and all that. And then it was stopped. He was taken away. And his pal, apparently, you know, because the screws said, no, no, he doesn't know. He's, he's not a fucking nonce and all that. He disappeared anyway. He put himself on the numbers because he was terrified, you know, thinking of guilt by association. But... um. Yeah, and the other guy went to hospital, a few stitches and that, and I think he had, like, a broken arm and a broken ankle or something, and a concussion and that, and the cut on his face. I don't think it was that bad. I don't think it was even a stitches job. I think it was almost like a bit of a scratch. Um, it's that people just can get to him, you know. So, but, um, so basically, yeah, he was just uh, shipped out. I don't know where he went. And uh, hopefully he got done at the next nick that he went to. But, you know, I don't know who these people think they are, these fucking, uh, these sex cases, you know, in like C cats and even in A cats. And the way they just walk around the wing mixing in as if they're normal, you know. I mean, I remember in another nick, I was having it with one, another rapist. And I didn't even know he was a rapist. Do you know what I mean? And he, he seemed all right to me. But how do you know? You know what I mean? Unless you see their depths and that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah. But like I say, I've got so many good stories uh, from that high point. And, you know, 
oh, I'm not going to lie, I, I did enjoy it there. At high point or knife point, whatever you want to call it. You know, so, but yeah. And uh, what else was I going to say this morning? Yeah, I just want to give a couple of little shouts out, you know. Um, I just want to say thanks to um, my friend uh, who's, uh, he used to be like, a Mai Tai boxer and he's just going to do a comeback you know because um, he's been ill and he, he wants to have another fight uh, and he's got a channel where he does training with his son who has autism and um, he's teaching his son boxing and it's helping his son you know with his life's journey and stuff and it's a really inspirational channel and uh, I think maybe you guys should check it out um, it's called Bob the Hammer and Fenton the Monster. And basically it's Bob doing his boxing training. He's got a full on gym of his own and everything. So, and he only lives up the road from me. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be training with him uh, from Thursday, from tomorrow, hopefully, if it all goes well. And so we'll be doing, uh, I'll be uploading a bit of footage of us training together. So that should be good because he's hoping to fight uh, possibly next year um, in your call. So, yeah, so it's going to be really good. Um, <coughs> yeah, so I just wanted to get that out, yeah. Um, and really, that's about it, I suppose. And uh, 